3D animation, game development or VFX might look so exciting, till you have to go through some of the most tedious and boring tasks which are involved in the 3D creation process and production pipeline in general. So let's take a look at these because you might find a common thread here. Let's start with UV unwrapping, I mean what can I say about it? And then, then a few of us if any, because it is about as fun as watching a paint dry. Let me explain. In a sense, you would have to spend an eternity having to mark the seams and unless you are a psychopath, believe me, you will find it hard to enjoy, especially after you work on tens or maybe hundreds of assets. In my opinion, it is not that bad in terms of small props like a table, little sword or maybe stylized assets. But imagine being tasked with the challenge of UV unwrapping something detailed like a colossal mech creature straight out of Zero Dawn. Suddenly, it quickly becomes a nightmare, doesn't it? And the fact that there are some people at Guerrilla Games who potentially did that is mind-blowing. It is a laborious and repetitive activity that doesn't scream creativity in the way that other aspects of 3D design might. But the fact is, they more likely than not used some UV unwrapping software or add-ons to finish the task. And this is especially important if you are a professional. For example, if you are a Blender or Max user, I recommend using UV Mac Pastor, which is a fantastic add-on. In addition to Zen UV or UV Toolkit if you are especially a Blender user. And if you are tired of UV packing, then UV Pack Master is gonna be the go-to tool because it is insanely good and it has a fantastic UV pack engine. If you are interested, you will find these tools in the description. The XP Pen Black Friday sale is right around the corner and it is offering huge discounts, up to 40% off on all of their lineups. So if you want to snag a tablet for yourself, now is a great time. You can click the link in the description to visit the XPPen Amazon storefront where you will find a list of all their products. XPPen offers premium products for very competitive prices. Their displays and tablets are of extremely high quality. And their cutting edge X3 Pro Stylus is one of the best in the market which will be included in all of their Artist Pro second generation models. If you are looking for a big screen drone display, you can start with the Artist 24 Full HD and Artist 24 Pro. The latter features a stunning 2.5K resolution and it delivers incredibly lifelike and vivid colors, allowing you to create images with stunning nuance and detail. But if you're looking for something a little bit more portable, you can check out the fully laminated Artist 13.3 Pro and 15.6 Pro featuring compact design and 8 fully customizable express keys, as well as the iconic red dial. Both screens offer 90% Adobe RGB and a 120% sRGB color accuracy. For pen drawing tablets, you can check the wireless Deco Mini 7W and Deco Pro MW and you can click the link in the description to check out the full list. So what are you waiting for? Grab your XP Pen tablet today. Now back to the video. If you somehow like UV unwrapping, I wonder what you think about rigging and white painting. I know that this may raise some eyebrows, but just hear me out first. You see, the idea behind 3D rigging is the creation of visual skeleton for a 3D model, especially characters, to be able to animate it later on. Weight painting on the other hand involves manually or automatically painting different parts of the model to determine how each part of the character's mesh responds to the movements of specific bones. My problem with these tasks as an artist is how they lean more towards a technical side of things often require setting up control mechanisms and stuff like inverse kinematics which can require a lot of effort and time, especially if you do that often. On top of this, the nature of this work is inherently repetitive. I mean think about it, you wouldn't have to place bones all over the place all day long and apply links to inverse kinematics or any special features to them. If this is not enough, there is a lot of trial and error that might come into play. If you tried rigging and white painting before, you will know what I mean, thanks to all the frustration that comes with white painting failures and parts of the rig that don't work exactly like you want, leading to an ongoing need for troubleshooting to face the technical challenges that may come up along the way. 
but if you want some tools to help you with rigging and white painting, I left some links in the description that you can check out because these are gonna help a lot to save you a lot of time especially and headaches specifically. Next we're gonna talk about rendering and simulation caching. These two share the common trait of making the artist do absolutely nothing. So long story short, rendering is the concept of turning a 3D scene into a 2D image or animation. Whereas caching is torn simulations such as fluid dynamics, cloth or particle systems into your computer storage to run it smoothly without having to calculate it each time. The problem with this is that they can take a significant amount of time, especially when we are dealing with high-end projects or in case of weaker hardware. As a result, 3D artists often find themselves waiting for hours or even days for caching or rendering to complete. But what does this have to do with our topic? Well, the unfortunate dilemma here is the fact that the computer gets held hostage by these endless calculations, leaving you with nothing to do in the meantime. We are talking about people who live and breathe through their art. It's almost a second nature to them, and having that taken away can lead to a severe case of frustration and boredom. Just like how this artist said, rendering is a necessary time-consuming evil, with no way around it. I feel especially annoyed with it because I'm not even a professional or anything. I just love doing 3D stuff and learning. Not sure where I'm going with this post, just passing time while rendering I guess. As we can see in this example, this artist couldn't do what he enjoyed most because of rendering and he got so bored to the point where he posted and ranted about it. So even though they didn't have to do anything in the meantime, it is still one of the most time consuming and boring tasks a 3D artist can do. But I think this is not gonna be as boring as the next one, which is the almighty retopology. You can't talk about boredom in 3D without talking about it. And just like how this beginner artist said, retopology is ruining my experience in 3D. Simple as that. In the last 7 months, I've been studying 3D and 2D months were like heaven, as I was studying sculpting and similar stuff. Everything was fine until retopology time began. Then everything became hell. I can't stand doing this anymore. But this can be joined by two other similar tasks. So like I said, first we have retopology, the process of creating a new 3D model over an existing one. I know, as crazy as that sounds. It is generally done on sculpted models made in software such as ZBrush or Blender because they usually have a high poly count and should be optimized to be more efficient, especially if used on weaker hardware or if they are gonna be used inside video games. The other thing is the cleaning of scans or photogrammetry, as they often require removing the artifacts, holes, and inconsistencies that come with them, as well as reducing their high poly count which could reach millions in some cases. Similarly, we have topology cleaning and optimization. You know, the process of deleting vertices, edges, and faces of your 3D modeled assets, I mean doing it strategically and purposefully to improve efficiency and to reduce the poly counts of your assets. There is nothing new here actually. We have already presented some reasons why these are gonna be boring. And generally speaking, 3D artists often dislike the same things. First, it is repetitive, it is time consuming, and it lacks any form of creativity. Basically everything you don't want as an artist. I mean, imagine having to sit there for extended periods of time, clicking vertices here and there, like there is no tomorrow. And for most people, I think this is gonna be frustrating as hell. Because every one of us wanna get to the fun parts. Next we have 3D rotoscoping, a process that kills the very same essence that makes 3D animation fun. The idea behind rotoscoping is taking a video of let's say a walking person for example, then tracing the movement of that person in the video by making a 3D character move the same exact way as the person in the footage. What makes this boring is how it eliminates all the decision making of animation that makes it fun. And it forces artists to copy the exact movement frame by frame, which could even take days or even weeks to work on the rotoscoping of a single project and it makes the job less exciting to work in, despite how important it is for most VFX productions. In a similar vein, we have masking. While it is more used in the field of VFX and compositing, masking is the process of creating a selection 
or a mask to isolate specific parts of an image or a video, which can be then used as an element within a 3D scene, such as a character. And it is generally considered one of the most tedious and time-consuming tasks for 3D artists and digital artists in general. Masking can be long and boring, especially if you want to mask an entire video, where you would have to do each frame separately. And there isn't much to say about it other than it is very laborious activity that can take a long period of time. That's why it is often outsourced to other studios in third world countries or developing countries where labor is kind of relatively cheap. Last but not least, we have match moving and tracking. It is really simple to understand actually because it is the process of tracking the movement of a camera in live action footage or of an object within a video to replicate that movement in the 3D environment. The idea behind it is to replicate that movement to be able to mix live action footage with CGI or to recreate it again fully digitally in 3D. And while it is undeniable that it is an important part of some of the coolest visual effects we have, Many artists consider this boring because it is more technically demanding and it is repetitive but not engaging. As a 3D artist or a VFX artist, you probably want to work on something creative and not repetitive. And if you're gonna be all day long trying to track cameras and do match moving, it's gonna be getting old really fast. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.